Welcome to the video on shock. Look at this person, he is shocked. We're not gonna talk about this shock, we're going to talk about medical shock. And medical shock it basically is systemic hypoperfusion. So you have your circulatory system, it is not getting blood to all the parts of your body, and that is medically known as shock. And that can either happen by reduced cardio, cardiac output or reduced effective circula, circulating blood volume. The end results of shock are three, three main things. Is one, you have low blood pressure, hypotension. hypotension. Two, you have impaired tissue perfusion, which means that your tissues aren't getting the blood supply that they need. And three, you have cellular hypoxia. The cells do not get the oxygen that, that they need, and then they start undergoing necrosis. Now, at first, if you have these three things, if you start going into shock, you can have, you can, it can be irreversible. You can, you know, reperfuse the area, you know, you fix the, the cardiac output or fix the, uh, you know, the blood volume or whatever, and the cells can repair and you don't have to undergo um, complete necrosis. It's reversible cell injury. But after a certain point, you go into irreversible cell injury, and that is when necrosis happens. Now there is three or three main, let me scroll down a little bit more, there are three major types of shock. There's one, cardiogenic, two, hypovolumic, or three, septic. So I'm going to talk about cardiogenic, hypovolumic, and these two down here, and then I'll leave septic uh, shock for a, a video all on its own because it's, it's a little bit more involved. But cardiogenic shock is something happens with the pump. Something goes wrong with the pump, and it's not producing, it's the pump, the heart is not pumping enough blood. That's cardiogenic shock. Failure of the myocardial pump resulting from intrinsic myocardial damage, something's wrong with the heart, extrinsic pressure, or obstruction to outflow. Whether it's not the, the pump isn't receiving the blood, um, like in the pulmonary circulation or whatever, and the heart does not pump sufficient blood. Some clinical examples are myocardial infarction, ventricular rupture. So in the case of myocardial infarction, you have a heart, heart, and it's pumping out blood out of the aorta. And then there's blood, there's, you know, there's blood vessels that supply blood to the heart. Even though it's a muscle, even though, it, I mean, because it's a muscle and it's pumping constantly, there's got to be arteries that supply blood to this heart. And in the case of the myocardial infarction is that, you know, there's a atherosclerotic plaque in here and this this vessel is is clogged and so this heart tissue doesn't receive blood and because it's working so hard it quickly dies and undergoes necrosis and so that's why people have triple bypasses or quadruple bypasses as they get in here and have heart surgery and they bypass this blockage in their heart so their heart can continue to pump and that's myocardial infarction if your ventricular, if you have ventricular rupture, this whole ventricle ruptures, that doesn't sound like a good thing. And then if you have arrhythmias, um, if the uh, the neurological firing of the heart from the SA node, and you know the the Purkinje fibers, everything that's in the heart, neurologically wise, if that gets messed up somehow, then they don't pump in in sync then you're not going to have, you're going to have a decreased cardiac output and have cardiogenic shock. Cardiac tamponade, which is pressure building up, which constricts, uh, constricts the heart's ability to pump. And then pulmonary embolism, which we've talked about in previous videos, where there is a blockage in the pulmonary circula circulatory system and causes a decrease of blood return to the left atrium and that obviously is going to affect how much 
blood is getting out of the heart. So the second one is hypovolemic. Just means you don't have enough volume, blood volume in your blood. Inadequate blood or plasma volume. Um, some hemorrhaging. If you have a severe cut on your arm or your leg or something and you start bleeding out, you know, at a certain point you're going to lose so much blood that the heart is not going to be able to you're not going to have enough blood returned to the heart and so the heart's going to can't pump in the blood out if you have fluid loss if you have severe vomiting diarrhea if you have burns or trauma and you lose a lot of fluid then that's going to affect your blood volume and then you're going to go into shock and what that means again what shock means is hypotension impaired tissue perfusion and cellular hypoxia or you have systemic hypoperfusion now the le less commonly there's neurogenic shock as in the case of if you know if patients undergoing uh, some kind of surgery and the something happens with the anesthesia where the nerves you lose vascular tone vascular tone and you know, because all these, you know, if this if this is a blood vessel on end, there's nerves that innervate, you know, the the major blood vessels to kind of affect the diameter, if you will, of this artery. And if something happens to your nervous system and it undergoes shock, then you then it will cause vasodilation here, and you'll lose vascular tone, and then you'll just uh, just too much, you know, if you do if you're able to do the area of of all the blood vessels in your body there's too much area for that blood volume to perfuse and so then you get hyperperfusion in the case of anaphylactic shock you have IgE mediated response and it also causes vasodilation as in the neurogenic shock but it also there becomes more porous so you get more holes if you will these endothelial cells they kind of stretch out a little bit and they're and it's able to leak so your blood volume is actually leaking into the tissues as and also the diameter and the area of all your vascular system is significantly increased which will then correspondingly decrease your blood volume in relation to the area so then you won't have enough blood to uh, perfuse all the tissues so that's neurogenic shock and anaphylactic shock that are less common and then hypovolemic shock and cardiogenic shock we'll see you in the next video where we will discuss septic shock